Welcome to Pocket Watch Podcast. I'm Zach. Cruz. Jake. Perry. Hey. Oh. I know y'all heard that switch up. I know y'all heard that switch up. As usual, we do got another guest up in the building today. So it makes it not a switch up anymore, huh? No, I know exactly. It's kind of getting to that point now where it's like not really. I know a y'all up. heard the guest that's here. I know <laughs> y'all heard the guest that's here. Uh, yo, thank y'all for listening again for another week. Um, like, follow, subscribe. Yes, give it. Do it right now, please. Listen, thank- we have so many people that watch our stuff consistently that do not follow us. Or subscribe to us So definitely Please subscribe Please follow You guys are like You guys are tuning in Every single week To our different shit And you guys still haven't subscribed You guys still haven't followed us So go ahead and do that We have like Word. 90% of our Word. viewers Are not subscribed And are not following us And shit like that So you guys gotta Come on man hit, Support hit, is key hit, Yeah hit that button bro Hell yeah man uh, <laughs> Shout out to the block um, If you're listening on the block right now Just know we drop on Mondays Two days before you're listening to it now Um I wonder always every time we say that I wonder if Rec like that's the guy that does the blog one oh five. I wonder if he's like, yo, stop trying to get people off my platform. <laughs> <laughs> but we're not getting them off the platform, we're just converting. But again, yeah. And and you know what? On top of that, because we're trying to test a little bit of like the effectiveness of that <laughs> avenue. Uh follow us on Instagram, follow us on Facebook, follow us on some of these things, give us some feedback if you strictly listen on the block one oh five, because that's something we're starting to look yeah. into. Cause we just got the shirts. We just made a couple of shirts now. We're, yeah. we're the, like that's that's some of the marketing so, things we're doing now. Uh, stickers, everything. hats, stuff yeah. like that. We're we're getting it going so we can start getting the word of mouth on there. We got a couple big things coming up. We will talk about it probably on the next episode. As far as far as marketing and stuff like that, which yeah. is super dope. That's dope. Um, but yeah, man, thanks for coming through. We got Perry oh, on. Uh, this is this is gonna be a cool episode for us because. Um, I mean, I know a lot of people, and and don't Perry's doing a lot of other things, and that's what we're gonna get into. But one of the main things I think that we kind of want to talk about here is like forex trading and stuff. And I think this is gonna be a good like forex for dummy episode, right? <laughs> forex for dummies, because we're definitely like we've messed with stocks, Jacob more than 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 me and Zach, but like. Like, we do safe stocks and shit like that. But, like, we <laughs> no, mess yeah. with stocks. Jacob's touched more of the day trading, you know, than we Options have. Options and shit like that. But uh, Perry's in the Forex. We want to have that kind of episode today. Um, especially because some of the guests we're going to have on, it'd be good that we get this basis Facts. set, right? Like, let's let's get it introduced. Because I have so many friends that are telling me, yeah, bro, all you got to do is follow. Like, it seems <laughs> like, and we'll start with it. Like, it seems like Forex trading... Everybody thinks it's a scam. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I, yeah. Why? I don't know. P- some people are weird, though. A lot of people think that, like, I think, personally for me, I think a lot of people think that Forex trading is a scam is because there's a lot of MLL, M- MLM-based companies yeah. that that have, like, um, like what, what is it called? Not sponsors, but, like, um, not leaders, but, like, mentors. Like, yeah. They have, like, a lot of mentor MLL, MLM-based um, companies and people like always look at MLM as like scams. Scam, yeah. It's like, so like what does MLM scheme? stand Multi-level for? Multi-level marketing. Pyramids. They always yeah. use the pyramid. pyramid schemes. Yeah. Which I mean, there, you can make a lot of money on the yeah. on the MLMs if you if you're a hustler and you do your thing. Like nice. I did one back in the day. I did the M- MCA one, and I made a I made a <laughs> shitload of money off of yeah, MCA. MCA. And yeah. everybody jokes around, but you know what? Every time somebody had an issue with their vehicle, who the fuck they called? <laughs> Zach, yo, Zach, bro, my car just broke down. Can you get a tow truck? Yeah, bro, I got you. I got one coming right now. Sign up with me, bro. What's yeah. up? Yeah, you know what I mean. It's yeah. like you can Facts. make money with them. But you what's can. crazy is I feel like like even in the stock market, there's MLM type. Mar- like structures yeah. mm-hmm. They just don't call it MLM Yeah right? like, like a different name But like p- I feel like putting it into your 401k Is pretty much the same type of structure Cause it's like uh, And that might be a bad example Yeah But it's know. like <laughs> Give me money to invest for you yeah. yeah And then if you get people to do the same thing Then I'll get a portion of yeah. what you're getting In XYZ Like I, Yeah I feel yeah, like they do the same thing right, Anyways That's real why quick. it's opinionated But we always yeah. forget Perry, We got Perry on Uh <laughs> Perry's on Perry on That's his name too <laughs> Anyways uh, I just gotta introduce you Because we always get into it Without introducing uh, My man is doing um, Insurance broker He's an insurance broker Which is kind of Kind of different Kind of a different way Of going about it But he sells yeah. like Insurance policies Stuff like that And what kind of insurance Do you sell? 
So right now I mainly focus on like life mm-hmm. for the most part because that's where I've been making the most money. But life I, insurance. I do health also, um, just here and there. But I mean, my my main goal is to pretty much have like my own agency where I'm handling all insurance aspects. Like you're gonna come to me for everything. Mm-hmm. Hell yeah! So yes. and if like as always, if you guys are listening, if you do want to connect with him, you guys need to get your life insurance set up. But I think oh, yeah. I think that'd be dope for us to set up talk about in this in this uh, episode because you know you got infinite banking with life insurance. You got so yep. many different things you can dive yep. into, yep. and yeah. that could be an episode on its own. I'm but glad you know <laughs> exactly. But like if you have if you're looking to get life insurance or if you don't know about a lot about it. Check the description. We're going to have all of his information down below so you guys can link with him. You guys can go ahead and talk with him and get more information. He'll put you on because there's a lot, a lot, a lot of life hacks that you can do with life yep. insurance policies to help make you wealthy and many different things. So, you know, definitely Hell, yeah. check him out. And then uh, and then how that career choice can help you do day because you pretty much day trade in Forex, right? Yeah. Cause yeah. It gives me more time. Because yeah, you got. Some of that free time yeah. to like where you're not necessarily doing a nine to five, but Facts. you're scheduling your time out to. All right, bet I'm Facts. gonna do this thing. My ultimate goal is to start my own agency, and then I'm gonna do forex trading and day trading and stuff, and make a nice little buck off Facts. of whatever money I am making. This is super dope. Um, uh, college graduate, FAMU, FAMU, FAMU. is FAMU HBCU. Yeah, HBCU. yeah, HBCU no graduate. Hey, let's go. <laughs> um, uh, business, business, business. Marketing. minor marketing, minor marketing. Yeah. Yes. Pretty cool. cool. So yeah. you got a degree. You're not somebody like we've had a lot of people on that don't have a degree that are finding these different paths. Yeah. Got a degree, but still is you're still kind of choosing this entrepreneurial path. Yep. Which is kind of interesting that yeah. I like. Right. So, yeah. uh, like most people, they go to school so they could get like those are the type of people that want to do that clock in, clock out type deal or whatever. Um, you got your business degree and stuff, Works. but you're still choosing this. Uh, insurance yeah don't get me wrong I ch- so like coming out of college i had the three opportunities to either have like well all three of the opportunities were basically in management and uh, marketing and business that was more the nine to five corporate life yep. i mean I, I did that at a point in time but it's just like I and you said you more. went to miami is that what yeah, you? yeah. okay the, my first opportunity i took was in miami but eventually i got introduced to insurance and that's when i just I couldn't do it anymore. I just like corporate is not for me. I just I want to control more. I want to like be myself. Like, well, yeah. have you always thought that way, or do you? Think, yeah, like I always thought that way. Always okay. Because yeah. like, sometimes because I've been in. I mean, I've been in sales period for like way more than college. Like I've been in sales, and that was what opened that up for me. And like just being around it, uh, growing up, it was just like certain stuff I seen that I was just like, yo. That's what I want to do But I mean I yeah. wanted to try out Different things So that's why I did Like the corporate stuff And things like that And then I took the experience I took the Like the knowledge That I've gained from that And then I just kind of like Wanted to do my own business In a way So I was like Let's do it Yeah Cause I want I asked that Cause I feel like Jacob's the only one here That lived in Miami Outside of us But I feel like um, I, I wonder how many like the corporate positions and stuff there are in Miami because I feel like everybody has got that entrepreneurial mindset out there like mm-hmm. that it's yeah. almost like an LA vibe but it's not where it's yeah. like everybody's either an influencer they're doing their own business well shit store. with the cost of living in Miami nowadays you better be doing you something you kind of gotta be <laughs> right? that way you kinda, that cost of living is crazy but that didn't have nothing you kind of always thought that way you were saying yeah facts yeah. I always thought that way so so did you say that somebody in Miami kind of put you on to that insurance like selling yeah. insurance and stuff like that yeah so. I mean, at my job, I was always like, because even when I was having a job, I was always that type of person that I had other stuff I was doing outside. So, like, I would use the free marketing. Like, if I'm working, for example, I worked at um, City Furniture. I was a manager at City Furniture in Miami. And as I was selling furniture, I gained that trust with them. So, I'm I'm like, yo, I do all these other stuff. I was selling iPhones. I was repairing iPhones at the time. I did did that for a while too. (laughs) But I did like a lot of stuff on the other, on the outside. On the side. So what I did was I used that free marketing to be like, yo, okay, they gained my trust with the furniture that they're about to buy. Let me see what else I can do like to kind of consume my like, my businesses that I was doing on the outside. And I, I felt like that was just free marketing. That just helped me out. And it kind of, it motivated me even more. I'm like, yo, what? Are you serious? Because they trust you. So it's like, it's a no-brainer. So you always had that, like, sales mindset. Yeah. And stuff like I've that. I've always been in sales. Like, I've sold everything. I've done it all. And City Furniture, I feel like I, I feel like I saw them at a career fair one time. And it yeah. was just a bunch of beautiful girls. 
Sure. Is there like is it, is that with no, the? Funny. I, I mean, your girls probably gonna listen. I don't know if you guys are together back then. I mean, I, I see I see a lot of girls oh, that work. It's them, furniture, but, right? Yeah. So. I, I, but as a, in a business, pers- like in a business way, I'm not gonna lie. If I was to hire people, I'd hire more girls for you, sales. You would, like, yeah. I they do always do any anything that I do with sales. They're always doing top notch. Yeah, I'm just like it's because they're more persuasive in a way. It's just like I feel like they're also a lot more approachable. Like yeah, and like exactly. I, not to be, I might turn into the cruise of sexist on this one, but like I feel like I feel like yeah. just as general in a society. People don't feel like a girl is going to screw you over or take That's advantage of you as much as a guy. Like especially like on a girl situation, like a girl when a guy approaches them, you know that they have that stigma where like, um, like guys always try to take advantage of girls because they feel like they're not knowledgeable, especially yeah. especially like in the in like the the automobile industry. But like I feel like girls are always a little bit more on guard when it comes to like male yeah. sen- uh, salesmen versus like female salesmen because they yeah. don't well saleswomen I guess you can say oh yeah let's like. We're going to be in a house, like even real yeah. estate or something. We're going to be in a house alone. You know what I mean? I'm not yeah. as worried or intimidated when it's a few. The other thing is, is like, especially. In you s- probably enjoy the guy, though. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, male, please. No, no. My real, my agent was a female, by the way. That was but, a problem I had in sales. I'm not going to lie. I, I'm gonna, sure. Bro. I was very like tight. But when you speak to me, I'm going I'm to talk to you very fluently. But it's just like I was very. Oh, tight. I had to learn just to be loose, just relax. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And what's funny about that, so, like, A, back to what Zach was saying, I feel like also girls, like, if you're a guy that has problems talking to a hot girl at a bar, but, like, now <laughs> now, now you're giving me a reason to talk to her because I'm trying to buy furniture or I'm trying to buy a house, it's like, yeah. oh, this is great. Yeah, or, this is amazing. This is my preference now. Or a guy's trying to flex and be like... Oh, two thousand dollars for that couch? I Man, that ain't nothing. Sign <laughs> yeah. me up. What's up? Yeah, you know what I mean? <laughs> but one thing we talked about before we started recording, as far as like Perry doing, like it's funny because, like you said, you always had that sales mindset, which kind of triggered from that bi- business mindset or whatever. But you, I like me, I consider myself an introvert too. Like you think yeah. you're an introvert, right? Very, yeah, right. And, I've always and, been like just, and you quiet. are an introvert, and 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 it's funny because you were we were kind of talking about where you were like like. It's funny because like I'm lending myself to these like like entre- like sales type positions yeah. where I got to put myself out there this and that it and I'm good you up. and you're good at it yeah doesn't mean like you, and I like to take that down I feel like I talked about this one other episode before but where it's like just because you're an introvert doesn't mean you can't talk to people doesn't mean you can't Facts. be good at sales and stuff like that I feel like I'm an introvert and I did a stand up comedy show like a week ago yeah, yeah but exactly with, but the difference is is does that take energy from you. Word. Right? Or does that add energy to you? And I think that's that difference between Facts. introvert, extrovert, right? Like, Jacob, I think, might be a little bit of an introvert, too. I'm introvert as fuck. So, like, when you go through <laughs> a day of sales or showings and stuff like that, like, that takes energy from you. Oh, yeah. But it doesn't mean you can't do good at what you do and talk about it. That's just one thing I Facts. like to point out. Like, this because people consider introverts like somebody that can't talk. Facts. Or somebody that can't do certain things. I just yeah. feel like you got to act, too. You know, if you know how to act a little bit, you know, that get too, into, you like, throw that little, in there. Exactly. Throw a little personality <laughs> in there. Hey, yeah. Hey, ah, you know, it's, but that's why, like, sales, you get to use your personality and just yeah. be yourself. Yep. With, like, life insurance sales, it's not really sales to me. It's more just educating because the policy I write for him is not going to be the same as yours and it's not going to be the same as his. I may use... One company for his, a different company for yours, and another company for yours. I'm just educating on what you, like, you're telling me what you need. It's a case by case. Case by case. So that's yeah. why, like, a lot of people always ask me, like, yo, how much is the cause? How much this? I'm just like, yo, that, that, I, I can't take that approach. It's not really a money perspective because you can pay whatever you want. Yeah. But it's what your situation is and what you're looking to do. Yeah. We try and get out and, of it. And for life insurance, health insurance, I mean, and for some of the, and we'll do that really quick because that could be boring for a lot of people. But <laughs> like, let's, to some of the young listeners we might have out here, what is the pro, what is the benefits of having life insurance? Obviously, yeah. health insurance is so you could go Facts. and get shit done that you need to get done Facts. based on how old you are or something. Facts. Maybe you need a different type of policy. Yeah. But how about life insurance? I feel like life insurance is not something that everybody gets, but yep. I feel like there are different benefits you could kind of get from that. Yeah, what, definitely, what, and. Just like health, auto, all these things where yeah. you don't, you're required to pay. Like I've been paying my auto insurance six, eight years probably, or whatever years. I've never used it, but we're mm-hmm. paying it. Mm-hmm. We're required. But the thing is with life insurance, a lot of people don't really think about it. But you can utilize it in different ways. For yep. one, 
it's broken down into two aspects. So there's term life insurance where it's kind of like you're renting your policy, you're, you're leasing the policy. Yeah. They 10, last 20, like 30 years, 10, 20, 30 years. But there's some where you can get your money back. Those, mm-hmm. It just depends on your situation yep. if that's what you need. Now, the other side, because the thing is with term life insurance, you only get paid out if the person dies. Yeah, Right. That's and it. that's what the average, like somebody like me that doesn't know too much about it, yeah, the average person is like, why am I going to put money in for something about like the worst case scenario, right? Yeah. Like, I don't give a fuck if I die, right? But <laughs> yeah. once you get family and stuff like that <laughs> yes. and you're supporting people, yeah. then maybe you care a little more. Yeah. But like, okay, go ahead. And those are usually cheaper. Yeah. That's the thing. Those are those are those policies. Now, on the other side, there's the permanent where these last like forever they can last for as long as you want but the thing is with the permanent insurance there's also they don't just only pay when you die they also have living benefits that you can take advantage of like um, a lot of the policies accumulate some type of money so as he was saying earlier like infinite banking so a lot of my mentors that I've been learning from in the past like month they've been using their insurance policies to like borrow from and then invest it and then put yeah. it back yeah that's one of the yeah. other benefits i've been hearing yeah. about Facts. take and a loan just, out, yeah. take a loan on yourself it's kind of like an investment yeah. at that point investment but if the thing is it's your one. money you're you're building that bank it's yep. basically a bank and you're building it because you're putting in what you want to put into it so everyone situation is different and everyone is going to grow a little bit differently but on average every year they're going to also add up to like 10 percent to that account so right if you paid like a thousand for the year, they're gonna add ten percent. It's a hundred dollars. Yeah. So as the time goes on, the compound interest like it's kind of crazy because you can grow, you can borrow from that. Yeah. And you can pay it back on yeah. your own time because yeah. Your and to put that into perspective for people that are like on stocks and stuff, like I feel like the average return on like some of those like the safe stocks even is like ten percent a year or something like that, right? Well, shit, right now, yeah. not not right now. <laughs> but, but, but to put it into perspective, right now, because I yeah. feel like you you got to yeah. talk to some people that are used to saving, yeah, yeah. and you got to convince them why but, these stocks are important. So here's yeah. the thing with saving: most banks that a lot of people don't know, you leave your money in the bank for a year. They're gonna give you on average zero point zero one percent. Yeah, oh. maybe zero point two if you're lucky. Maybe point zero two if you're lucky. So yeah. Three if you're badass. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> if you're a badass. Point zero zero three. It's like yeah. yo, these are different ways to like have your money grow because yeah. nine times out of ten, most people are gonna need to get insurance. Well, not need, but whoever like if you need it or you want it. You're going to get it. So it's like if you take advantage of these things earlier, you can utilize it for certain stuff that fit your situation. Yeah, man. And even like and and I feel like I, I get a lot of these questions and a lot of these statements from like the older demographic. Right. Like my parents <coughs> yeah. or like our parents and stuff like that, where uh, mo- and it's the honest truth. Like most people like our parents that haven't became millionaires or yeah. multi-figure people, uh, they're used to a savings because yep. they, they probably did good. Enough, right? Like the middle yeah. class saves, the poor spend, and then the the rich uh, invest. invest, right? Mm-hmm. So they're the definition of that statement, right? And like I'll talk to my mom, and and she'll she'll mention something like, "Oh yeah, inflation's crazy because of Biden, yeah. this and that." It's like, yeah, well, like <laughs> that might that may be true, right? <laughs> but uh, instead of complaining about why there's inflation, why don't you do something about yeah. inflation and, and take advantage of it. investing, advantage of, yeah. uh, life insurance, like all these different avenues of putting yeah. your money into accounts that are going to compound and grow against because yeah. think about it if if these accounts or these stocks or whatever forex trading like yeah. we'll get into like if you put your money into that you're taking control of the value of that dollar yeah because yeah, exactly. at the end of the day that market forex or it, way more specific to forex yeah. but like even stocks the dollar is just a unit of measure. Yeah. 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 You're no longer dealing with the value of it. Yep. Right? You put your money in at a point in time and now you're just using it as a yeah, unit yeah. of as measure. Who cares about inflation? Yeah, as a tool. You know what I mean? Like yeah. if if a burger is what a burger is, and like you said, <laughs> when our grandmas used to buy burgers, it was a dollar, now it's five dollars, right. that's inflation. But if I bought that burger back when your grandma bought it, it's still worth $5. Yeah, yeah exactly. You know what I mean? And it's just like, baby, this is a kindergarten way right. of going about it, but yeah. it's crazy no, the though. amount of people that I, don't invest because that connection doesn't happen. Yeah. yeah. I also want to touch on something else too that, that's great for um, like permanent life insurance is that for, especially like right now, today's day and age, stocks are taking a massive hit. But if you're putting money into life insurance, you don't take losses. Yeah. Yeah. This so is zero. That's true. Yeah, so true. like long-term investment, it can actually 
in some situations be almost better yeah. than than what than what a lot of those long term stocks do. Which is one of the reasons why you're supposed to diversi- diversify your portfolios yep. and stuff like that. Because having that that, that permanent long term life insurance is 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 vital because like right now the market's down and then you can still borrow from that yep. you don't have to worry about taking a massive loss for example like right now with the markets being down like they are if you were to pull let's say like ten twenty thousand dollars out you'd feel in in tenfold whenever the market stabilizes oh, back yep. where it's at yeah, it, yeah. it'd be a lot more in reality yeah. you take ten thousand you're really taking fifteen twenty thousand but yeah. if you take it from your okay you know what this is down let me go and take it from my life insurance borrow you're that money sure out it's, and it's not going to make it that's a difference. why that's i key. feel like yeah Go ahead. Go no, ahead. I'm saying that's key because, like, you can. The thing is that people don't understand is you pay it back when you want to because and you pay interest on yourself. You, you can. pay interest on your, you can pay. Yeah. Like the thing is, if you die and you don't pay it back, they just take it out of the death benefit. Yeah, exactly. There's yeah. nothing you can lose, yeah. honestly. Versus, like, like, for example, like if you take, like, let's say you make an investment, like let's and say you, you buy like a fifty thousand dollars to buy like an investment property, and then you die, you have a loan against it, and now your children got to figure out what to do. Now, of course, you have if you don't have the life insurance. Mm-hmm. Then your kids have to figure out they have to take over the monthly mortgage, yep. or they got to sell it out. Versus if you have the life insurance and you pass away, then you, whatever that whatever that money that they have, they're, they're going to see a deduction in it. But now they own that real estate property; yep. and they can continue to have. So the it's more of income. like a stable investment, almost. Facts, you know. Yeah, like, there's is. a zero. There's a zero. Like there's a floor. You, you're not going to lose after a certain. You, you're, yeah. you're the one. That's there's no way to lose. Growing. Yeah. This yeah. is a fl- there's usually a floor all the time. Yeah. There's a ceiling and a floor in them. Every ceiling and a floor. Yeah. Ceiling is usually ten percent as far as what they're going to add for you. Yeah. And then floor zero. That's because you're you're investing into it, so mm-hmm. you can't really lose. Yeah, yeah. So that you look at it as an investment, and that's yeah. and that's some that's of why the you pros. Said diversify. That's key. Yeah, that's yeah. really key. Yeah, <laughs> uh, and that's some of the pros. Like I was talking about, like, like, and and that that's a good point. Like when you put into, I've been checking my four hundred one k against my voo, which is like an <laughs> yeah. index fund or whatever, yeah. and the percentages of gains and losses are like the same. Yeah, yeah, which is interesting because it's like, oh, that's all they're doing, right? Yeah. But you're paying a fee and you're getting other benefits. Like 401k is different because like that comes from your company too. Oh yeah, and, and, and they're matching you. That's yeah, free money. Yeah. That's but, vital. Um, some of the cons to it is like yeah, but you're you're only gonna make what they say you're gonna make. You no and they're probably gonna make a lot more. And they control it. Yeah, you but, don't control nothing about the. Yeah, but you're it. guaranteed a certain like like. Kind of like what you were talking about, like you're not gonna lose versus yeah. like if you go do that yourself, that's on you. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And yeah. like if you want to go put it into GME because you're feeling like <laughs> not disciplined right now, that's on you. And that's kind of like the pros and cons, similar mm-hmm. to like what you're saying. Where and and answer this question for me because I don't know. So life insurance seems like that you pay you pay for that service a little bit. Yeah, but then. The, the pro is that you're going to get that guaranteed return yeah. and you're not going to fall under a certain, uh, you know, floor. Yeah, yeah. Um, is it just as beneficial to get life insurance early it's as, it, yeah. as it's like better. a stock? Right, like the my longer daughter, you have it, my daughter is one. She has a policy. Like, yeah, the, the, there you go. The, the younger, the, the younger you are, the, the, the better it is. is right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. The cheaper and the more it grows. Because the most, yeah, uh, like, the better condition you're being to yeah. pay a lesser. And pool. if you Facts. feel like you're gonna get it anyways, and sometimes I ask these questions to pull this out, but yeah. it's like if you feel like you're not, you're gonna get that. You're gonna have to get it anyways, right? Like when yeah. you're 40, you got a family, Facts. you got assets, you got shit that needs to be maintained. And if Facts. I pass away, my family's not gonna yep. be burdened Facts. with all this. So you're probably gonna get it anyways. Yep. But getting that life insurance policy at, policy at 40 versus getting it at in your 20s, way cheaper. Yeah, and, and more growth, growth, more growth. Depending on what you want to do, I, I give you a real life example because this is what made me really get into the insurance industry a lot more because. Like I was saying earlier, a lot of people, they work only for one company, so they only have one option, so they can't really help too many people. And what made me get into more being a broker is because I get 30 companies, so now I'm closing more people. I'm not sending them away because I can help them out. So, like, for example, my grandfather, um, I got into the insurance industry right around the time, like, my grandfather was getting sick and things like that, but... Um, the person that was helping him out with my grandma to get him a policy, they couldn't get him approved. Like they tried yeah. a whole year. They could not get him approved. I said, you know what? I'm going to do what I can. And I ended up finding like a pot because he was very sick in the hospital, things like that. But most people are not going to approve him because he's at risk. Yep. Yeah, exactly. But yep. I mean, I ended up finding him policy. It, of course, it cost a little bit more. Um, and then, I mean, as soon as that happened, I would say probably like a year later, he actually passed away and 
Luckily, that was in place. But yeah. it's just like, imagine if I just let that guy not get him approved. Yeah. Yeah. Because of him exactly. being lazy. It's just really laziness because yeah. Yeah. when you're a broker, you got 30 companies now. Now I can go to any company and try to find him a policy. And like, that was what kind of woke me up because it's like, what if I would have not taken like that initiative? He wouldn't have had like something to be able to help him out for his funeral. And it's just like, yo, those things kind of wake you up, bro, because. Yeah. Now I'm thinking for other people. Now yeah. I'm thinking for my family. After that, I went after like every most of the people in my family to make sure they got something. I had my own, and then that, after that, that's when I just started growing into like all the other clients. And that's a yeah, good that's a good story about the relevancy of it and why yeah. everybody inevitably gets it eventually, right? Mm-hmm. Like I I thought about putting a life insurance policy on my pops, which I really should soon. You know, yeah, and I mean? that, that's one of the cool things about it. you can put a life insurance policy on anybody that you want to. Yeah. You, Anybody you, you could put friends, it, you could put as long it, as you don't kill them. Yeah. Well, yeah, uh, yeah that's. Uh, you gotta have I mean, I, interest. Yeah, I figured that would be uh, right. be without giving. <laughs> An- another cool thing about it too, though, is that you can also sell your life insurance policy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, right. So, 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 so you can sell it off to like there's companies that will that will. I mean, you, more than I like. Ideally, you don't want to do that unless like you're like in a crazy situation in life. Yeah. But you can actually sell your life insurance policy to companies. Yeah, they will buy. Yeah. They, they will buy your policy. Basically, they just wait for you to die. Which yeah. there's a lot of controversy on that. But that's that's that's. <laughs> I, they wait you, for you to die. But the thing is, I can get more into depth about insurance. But there's a lot of things like that where, like you're like for example, there's banks that the, a lot of banks have like Boli, which yeah. is like bank owned life insurance mm-hmm. on the, the employees on like the key man like yeah. insurance goes a long way and a lot of businesses they use it in like a smart tactic because yep. like let's say like two people of their top employees <laughs> can't work there's insurance that'll help them pay for those things as far as like the employees being out of work and all that like it goes way into depth where it's like it's kind of crazy i'm not gonna lie no yeah. and, and that's two things a like i just made that correlation just because just like a 401k where you know some you people start it eventually no yeah. matter what no matter but what. if they start in their 40s they're yeah. not getting half the benefit of somebody that started in their 20s yeah, exactly. life insurance there's the same correlation same it's like correlation. you get this low cost value because you're healthy and then you get all the benefits that they promise you just as much as yeah. you would yeah. get when yeah. you get it in your 40s or 50s and it's the only reason why I try to make that point is because I think a lot of people in my age, our age group, don't even consider it. Like, they're yeah. not even thinking about it yet. But it probably should be something to be thought about because yeah. just as much as – think about it just as much as diversifying your portfolio. Basically. Yeah. And I like that we talked about Basically. that because it's like, all right, yeah. you're investing in fucking – if you feel like you're diversified because you're in uh, crypto and safe stocks – and 401k or yeah, IRA, IRA then also feel like you're di- you're adding a set of diversification yep. doing this life insurance thing Word. because there is you could sell it you could do this or that if you're going to get it anyways yeah. you're not, you're not going to get the same benefit a lot of people just focus on like the death benefit but there's yeah. like, there's a lot more you can do when Word. you're living like Word. it's really it's kind of crazy if you break down the numbers it's really crazy talk to some talk to Perry about it yeah. <laughs> those of y'all that are RAs that consider it you want to diversify your portfolio it's talk to way. Perry about it <laughs> Uh, the next thing you kind of mentioned about being because you, you talked about if I'm an insurance broker, I could go and find any type of provider or any type of you know yeah. situation for this person. What's the difference between insurance broker versus what? Insurance agent. agent? Like captive like agent, right? Captive agent. Yeah, because I, I do Medicare. So like so, yeah. Medicare, we have like captive agents and yep. like brokers. So I, I can sell devoted. I can sell well care. I can sell Facts. Humana. I can sell those plans. But are you yeah. limited at that point? No, or? I can sell all Medicare plans if I want to. I yeah. just have As an have agent? It. Yeah, I'm an, I'm an agent for Medicare. So, yeah. Okay. So, it's yeah. the same concept. So, if I'm <laughs> fucking Jacob full yeah. some so shit. So, versus what? <laughs> yeah, but I haven't done it. So, I'm not, pre- I'm not preaching it. So, what's right. the difference between that and being a broker? So, I mean, that's kind of like a broker, but it's just, like, broken down in different ways. There's, like, the captive where you can only work for, like, this company. You, they won't let you, like, do anything else because they're like, yo, you're not going to take our people, our, yeah. our clients. But, yeah. like... The the agent that's kind of the agent way where you have to work for that specific company, but the broker way, you can have all the different companies like he's saying. It gives you more options to like basically close your your, yes, your yeah. client. Yeah. yeah. So it gives like let's say like compared to the that one person that's doing the like the selling, he only has one company, so he's only gonna give you one price. Yeah. I can give you thirty prices. Yeah. And I'm gonna beat that guy. Because easily. you're going through different companies. I'm going through different because I'm through my own agency. Like yeah. I'm not controlled through a company. They can't control what I do. So I can do whatever I want. So and how much harder is that path versus doing the agent path? And what is way the pros harder, and cons? Way harder because 
if, if you don't got the mindset to do it, I'm, you're not going to do it. Because it's like commission only. And you got to be able to like be like, yo, I'm going to wake up this day. This is my schedule. I got to do this. I'm not going to lie. It was hard for me in the beginning because yeah. going from like that structure or like nine to five schedule and then being like, yo, I got to do this myself. If I don't call these 100 people, I'm not going to make money. Yeah. Today. Cause, because so, cause like, like you, you have to you generate do. the leads. It sounds yeah, like you the difference. Generate your own leads. Yeah. yeah. You got to find your own leads. And yeah. it, you're taking you're taking more of a risk on yourself. More of a risk on yourself. That yeah. I'm I'm a big risk taker, so that was yeah. a no brainer for me because yeah. I like I like having no ceiling. Yep. And when you're like a captive agent, you kind of have a ceiling. It's like they're giving you the, the kind of almost a, a certain amount that you can make. But, but they me, give you a floor a little bit. They give you a floor a little okay. bit sometimes in a way. Some uh, give you salary. Some give you like salary plus commission. Honestly, yeah. But like I said, I want the max. Like I want max. Like my my um my act, actual like commission level is 110. Like wow. I'm not I'm not at 100, and they go up to like 150. Really? So if you're with like an agency, an uh, agent, like if you're an actual life insurance agent, and you're captive, like 50, right? 60. Yeah, most people they get like thirty. Thirty? I thought fifty or sixty. It at depends least. on the company. Most companies start at thirty. Shit. Yeah, some companies start at thirty. So it's just like it was a no brainer to me. I yeah. want to make I want to make okay. the most amount of money. If take I got to put in the work, you though. take the middle. We talked about it on the Corbin or Corbin, Corbin if Corbin or if you're Corbin. a douchebag, but <laughs> I was just saying, but. Taking that middleman out, there's money in yeah. taking that middleman out. Yeah, yeah. It seems like that's even in do. my situation, there's a middleman, but it's like cutting in a cutting, little bit, cutting cutting yeah. that out. Yeah, yeah. and that's most. why my goal is to have like my own agency, where because I, I mean I do life and health now, and I wanted to get into like auto and all this stuff, but from my mentor, what I've been learning is like you don't do everything yourself. Mm-hmm. Like once you can like automate your business, then that's when you see your business go to another level. Because like think about it. If you were to leave for vacation, most people that say they have a business, they're not making money when they're on vacation because yeah. they're actually working the job. But once you can like get to the point where your business is automated and yeah. you got employees working for you and things like that, that's when your business can take off to another level. And that's the only way you can scale, right? Like, that's, that's how you can scale. Yeah. Think about it, McDonald's. The yeah. person that owns McDonald's is not working. That that's the brand. Yeah. It's like yeah, hundred percent. You're just the brand. Hundred percent. But I mean, like what you just talked about sounds similar to like how Zach. So Zach does signings for like real estate transactions, but notary stuff. signing, right? Yeah. So oh, you, you sign, have yeah. your company that provides you with business, but you realize you made a little more money doing it. What is yeah. it like the? Basically, just do it on your independently. So they have they yeah. have a uh, direct, and then they have um, like signing services. Mm. So you can do signing services, but it's basically like a middleman that gives you leads, or you can do direct, direct which, signing. Yeah, direct yeah. signing, which basically you you get your own clients through title companies. But mm. the, but the dope thing about what I do is you have the ability to be able to do both. So like he's mm. saying, if you're a captive agent, you're you're captive. You don't That's have it. the ability. You no, know, you don't yeah. have the ability to do it on your own. Versus like me, I can do the the, the signing services, and I can do direct whenever I have. Is the that clients. not the same equivalent to like real estate agent and real estate broker? Is that kind of did we finally solve the difference? It's a. It, <laughs> It's a similar equivalence. Like, for instance, like, when you're a real estate broker, you can determine the uh, commission base. So, for instance, Keller Williams will only go anywhere under 5%. Because you're an because agent I, for them. Yes, yeah, since I'm an agent for them, I cannot take anything less than 3% on nice. my own. So, I have to do everything at 5% to get the broker, the buyer's agent, 2%. Yep. So, it's it, if That's I was my own agent, I could definitely undercut the middleman and be like, you yeah. know what, I'll do that 4%. Which you would have to be a broker <laughs> to do? I would have to be a broker in my own yeah. agency to be so, able to create so, those type of... That makes sense. So it's a nice. That's the that's yeah. the difference. Finally, we just figured out. The, so it, through kinda, insurance yeah. agent and brokerage, we kind of figured out. Yeah, that's that's you, basically what it is. Being able terms. to do it yourself, kind of. Yeah, because you you're cutting out a lot of the people that are in between who's getting the money. Because when the the goal was just to like cut out all those people, but like when you're captive, it's kind the money's being flowed too much. By the time it gets to you, you're getting like whatever. Yeah. But when you're the broker, it's kind, you're just probably like one or two people. Like before the actual company, right? Well, I right. feel like when I join the broker too, you can actually provide more benefits. You exactly. know, like because if say exactly. your situation can't go with the benefits as a captive, yeah. I got to just be like, all right, well, thank you. Yep. Bye. And yeah, and you close way more. You can close way more people. Cause and I'm not and that's, I was captive at first, and that's interesting because like you were saying, like uh, most companies start you off at thirty, and then like you're at one ten. That means that you would easily have to close like three and a half transactions to be at your level. You know what yep, I mean? Yep. And it. On top of that, you're able to close the transactions more efficiently than a captive agent because of the fact that you have the you have the resources to be able to go to so many different companies. Mm-hmm. So it means that they were they would have to do 
captively, they would have to do three and a half basically to get to where you're at. Thanks. And on top of that, you're able to close them at, at a higher level as long as you're consistent with your stuff. Mm-hmm. So to me, it's almost like the only the only people who decide to go captive are the ones that are probably just they're what? they're just scared or they don't want to yeah. they don't want to take the leap. I was scared. You, you said you started off captive. Yeah, right? I was scared. I, yeah, I, I didn't. I was just like. I was kind of scared in a way because uh, it sounds was, terrible. It sounds like we're it's putting just, it as captain. It's not even like, that it, was, it wasn't even that it was terrible. It was just like too good to be true. Like I seen the numbers. Like I told you earlier, the numbers yeah. hundred dollars give me nine hundred, and it's just like, bro, it's not true. So I went the easy route, and then when I went the easy route, I kind of got into experience, and then those same people that were trying to introduce it to me, they were just showing me, and I'm just like, I'm like, nah, let me just take the chance, and I'm I'm just like, what? It's, it's so crazy It's just really crazy to me I'm yeah. not gonna lie As far as like How much they make So did you did Doing like uh, The agent route The captive route Did that You think that gave you Like the courage a little bit Also yeah, Cause you got sure your did. feet wet It sure did Cause I was I was like yo I would deserve way more It's like working like a It's like you coming out of What high school or college Working your first job And you work for like a year And you're like Damn I'm getting paid this much But I deserve more like, yeah. I really do deserve more because I'm putting in so much work. Yeah. So I was just like, nah, I need more. Because it you was think, like, especially if you don't think like what you provide is like you could go do the same thing the company is probably doing for you. Exactly. It's like, all right. Uh, and the applications take the applications take 20 minutes. You can you can make. I mean, I've seen people make 3k, 4k, and then 20 in 20 minutes. Yeah. Like it's kind of it's kind of crazy. And what that's saying is, guys, if you're looking for like a career switch or something like that. Look at make some more money or kind of like maybe go on your own and do your own adventure. Definitely insurance is one of the best ways to go because um, I saw a statistic a while ago that there's more more millionaires come from uh, insurance than any other industry in the entire, even real estate. I'm sure. So there's more yeah. people that become millionaires from in- insurance, doing insurance sales. So if you're looking at that, man, that's definitely a good route to go because you can make some. And that's on top of that, you're, a lot of your income is residual too, right? Yeah. That's what I ask you. Like, so so it's, it's residual. How does it happen? Like how much do you get back in residuals? So as far as residual, depend. it just depends on your company. Every company is different. Um, I have my set up in a way where I kind of get a certain percentage every year as long as the person keeps paying. Yeah. Um, and it, it's, it's kind of cool because you're gaining that trust with the person. So you're building like some type of value in it. And most times they're not gonna like cancel the policy. I never really had problems like that where they cancel. Exactly. So that means that over as time goes on, you're compounding that residual income continuously. So you have your initial fee that you get from most people. And then on top of that, you're, you're getting, you're getting residual income from that. And that's yeah. probably one of the reasons why it, it creates more millionaires yep. is because like you know when you first start out it's definitely going to be tough for the first couple of years but once you build up your clientele and as you keep doing yep. more and more and more sales it just keeps building to the point where it's like okay this year you know you're doing one thousand dollars a week the next year at that same time you're probably doing a thousand dollars in just residuals because at that point and then you're just pumping it out even more and more it keeps that's, building up and that's just two routes of of the income as far as like insurance there like how we was talking about earlier about the lm uh, m LM. It's hard. I, don't know why. I always would say right. LLL. <laughs> I always say network marketing. Because yeah. I've been into network marketing for a long time. Um, yeah. And I do a lot of things with network marketing. We When we talk about the Forex side, I'll get into that too because I did Forex and network marketing. But right now is kind of what I'm doing with insurance. It's network marketing. Yeah. Anybody that I pretty much bring un, like bring into the agency, they put them under me and I make a percentage of everything that yeah, they do. exactly. So it's, it's kind of in a, a mar- network marketing aspect also. Yeah. Well, I, and I would say speaking to what Zach was saying, where it's like thinking of career changes, just like if you're sick of what you do and you want to put, you know, your work or your money in your own hands and stuff. Here's a great example. Here's a great journey, which is why. Thanks for fucking coming on. Yeah. This is why we have you on. No, thank you. For um, me. Doing. All right. Cool. Let's consider insurance brokerage or, you know, bro, you know, being an insurance broker or being an insurance agent. Boom. Here's the difference of that path. Right. But even Perry chose insurance broker. Right. Here's all the pros of that. Here's why that's working out good for you. But it's also giving you that free time Yeah. to do, like, pretty much you're doing what? Like, Forex day trading? Yeah, day trading with Forex. Fuck. Like, yeah. there you go, man. Like, I don't, I mean. It's addicting. I mean, and here's the thing. It's like, uh, like, link with Perry if you want. Link with somebody that you know that's doing something that, like, Perry's doing if you want. But then it's like, all right, stack up your finances against him just doing that, right? But then also add in the free time and the 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 availability to do yeah. like a day trading type thing. Yeah. And it's like, come on, you gotta <laughs> consider that, right? Like and it's so fun. what is Forex trading? So it's basically a lot of people honestly they do it now. Like whenever you 
pretty much travel to a different country. Uh, let's say you go to Europe, um, you take like a thousand dollars, and let's say you don't spend any of that thousand for like a week. Um, but at the end of the day, you gotta remember you're gonna exchange that thousand USD into euros. Yep. Now, let's say when you come back with that thousand, you don't spend anything, and you go back to change the euros into USD. You're not gonna get a thousand back. You're gonna either either you get like nine eighty or a thousand and twenty. You're gonna either profit off of that. Or you're gonna lose money. Your exchange is in, so it's so it sounds like forex trading is like what like stocks of currency. It's currency exchange. Yeah. Currency exchanging. Yeah, yeah. But it's, what's changing the game in forex is that you can trade indices, you can trade crypto, you can trade uh, stocks, you can do pretty much a lot. Like they give you a lot of opportunity. And what makes it a big market is like a, it's a right now it's probably like eight trillion, but. From last time I've seen, it's a seven trillion dollar market. It's the biggest market, even bigger than the stock market. It's for really because you gotta understand that people are profiting off of it going up and off of it going down. Yeah, yeah. But I so I have one question because um, I think this is one of the I'm not I'm not I've I've dabbled in forex. I had like a like a practice account and I put some money into it and was playing with it back back in the day. This was probably shit, man. I was still living with my parents back then, so that was. Whew. A long time ago, like eight years ago, so that's like folks are just kind of. So I, I was dabbling in it, just kind of like playing around with it, and I did make some money on. I lost a little bit of money, but I think overall it came out ahead. But um, I didn't really, I didn't really get too crazy into it. But um, you can day trade in that without having a minimum balance in your account, right? Yeah, and that's like that's one that's one of. Yeah, th- th- that's one of like the the big big features with yeah, it because most leverage. Yeah, because most banks require you to have like most investment companies require you have to have like exactly. ten to twenty five thousand. Some require a lot more to day trade to be able to right. day yeah, trade stocks. That's but true. forex does not require you to have a minimum balance to day trade, and they let you do stocks and stuff like that too. Yeah. And for people that don't know, that are totally out of this day trading to qualify as a yeah. day trader, that's to make multiple transactions per day. Yeah, exactly. Right? So you like can to do sell stocks and day buy. trading on forex. Yeah, yeah, they have I stocks. Trade, on. Have no limitation, like no. Limitations to it. I'd be trading Tesla like yeah. daily. Yeah, day yeah. trading. Yeah, without twenty five thousand dollars in your account. No. Yeah, I had. I probably was like, Jake was like, probably yeah. like five hundred. Like what the fuck? <laughs> but that's the. That's what I'm saying. It's that's why it's a seven trillion dollar market because there's more Shit. opportunity. And then no. also what people don't understand is there's leverage. So mm-hmm. what you can change your. My leverage is one to five hundred. But like the average leverage is one to one. So that means like your dollar is a dollar. Mm-hmm. Then there's like one to two. Your dollar is two dollars. But think about it, one to five hundred. Yeah, it's like that's why it's kind of a bigger market. How do you increase that leverage? You can when you open the account, you pick your leverage. I started with one to fifty because I used like twenty dollars. I didn't want to like OD. yeah, because I mean the higher your leverage, the I mean you can lose your money very fast. Yeah, so you you yeah. still gotta if you reap the benefits, you also gotta like yeah. take take ownership. Of you gotta the, take ownership of the uh, loss of too. the losses. You gotta take ownership. yeah. <laughs> so like, for instance, I had a question because I was fucking with forex, and like, when do you determine where it's like, all right, I fucked up, I gotta take my loss? Because <laughs> like, there's certain levels. I'm like, yeah. you know, they're low for a second. I'm like, and I yeah, came facts. back up. It came back up, but actually got in profit. You gotta like, yeah. the, the thing with the thing with forex, you gotta study it, bro. Yeah, you gotta study it. There's, study, a, candle, study. there's a candlestick bible. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah no, the candlesticks. You know, like yeah. it's it's and very similar. Resistance. Stocks. It's very similar when it yeah. comes to the like bullish patterns, when it Facts. comes to like actual like head and shoulders and stuff like that. Like it has certain similarities, but it's like I don't know. Like where is that limit where you're like, you know what? I I definitely yeah, fucked up. I would <laughs> say it depends on it depends on the trade because there's patterns in the trade. There, I mean, there's patterns on the charts. There's like things that um, have you ever heard of like higher lows and lower lows? Yeah. Like it's basically like a stairway pattern. So when the market the market can only move in three ways, it can only go up down and then sideways mm. you only want to trade when it's going up and down so the point is like what i always break it down for like most of my students i'm in basic terms think of it as a stairway if you're trying to get in when it's going up and it comes back down and it falls below like that previous stairway yeah, you, need to be, down. you need to be getting out like yeah. that it's just common sense that means it broke structure and it's just gonna it's gonna fall it's just certain things that you see after like just witnessing it, you're like, okay, bet I got to get out this trade, reevaluate, and get back in. And, you're gonna take losses, and gonna take and it. so that's that's part of like what people are saying. The pros of this forex trading is yeah. is there's so much so that there's a bible to it, right? Yeah. Like there's a somewhat of a better science because it's not like you're putting into Tesla and then Elon Musk smokes <laughs> weed on Joe Rogan, <laughs> right? 
And then your stock drops just because Elon Musk smoked weed on Joe Rogan. Well, on Forex, you can buy Tesla. Too. Right. But, yeah. but like for the most part, the currency trading. Yeah, exactly. Like, most I feel like trading. Forex also offering other stocks is like just something they're doing to get more people on. Exactly. But exactly, yeah. the main focus is like the currency Currencies. trading, right? Yeah. So it's like you're investing in a currency. So the ups and downs of that might be a little more scientific than... Yeah. Elon Musk is going to decide to smoke weed on Joe Rogan today, so your <laughs> stock's going to plummet, which was like a good example years ago. Most, right t- most times, because you got to understand that we're just retail traders. We don't control the market. Like We're just trying to ride the wave, honestly. Right, and and you, yeah. which is what the market should be. Yeah. Well, usually it's the traditional right? traders like, that control it, right? You say, yeah. Institutional exactly. traders that can With the big money, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's yeah. The, and, and that might be, like, one of the pulls in, pull-ins for Forex trading, too, is there's less institutional traders, maybe? I don't know. Or is the research it's more, just, like, governmental versus, like, company? I would say that's what makes it, that's probably what makes it that $7 trillion market to $8 trillion, because it's just so many people that are dipping and dabbing in it. Mm-hmm. You got to understand the banks that we put our money into, they're, they're doing this, too. Yeah, um, I like I in a few, in the past I've applied for different forex trading jobs. Um, a lot of banks hire people to trade our money. Of course, why in wouldn't the, they in the, in the market? <laughs> yeah, like, all they're getting I, is I balances. Was, I was trying to get hired for a position like that in the past, but then I was just like, you know, what? I could learn to sit on my own since they want to hire me. Like, damn, because they always want experience in that stuff. So it's just like, damn. That's what made me get into it myself. I'm like, yo, I can learn this on my own then. So they got like real deal nine to five jobs yeah. at banks to do this. Go, and what, go and look at it. You can get hired for forex trading. I had an interview last month for a, um, a prop firm that they were hiring forex traders. But of course, like how they always do, they require like 25K minimum. Yeah. I'm yeah. just like, no, I'm just, no, it's not, I'm not with it. Right, right. I'm doing good what uh, I'm doing yeah. right now. I'm straight. There's other routes. Because, but that's interesting, yeah. though, because, and, and that's something like, just like stocks, like, just because of Robin Hood and stuff like that, more and more people are getting, like, familiar with trading stocks. Which I love it. Right. I love people yeah. talking it's, about it more. Yeah. It's awesome. Yeah. But on the other hand, this is something like currency trading, like yeah. currency exchange and stuff like that, like trading on the value of different yeah. currencies is something that banks have been doing for yep. oh, all forever. time. Yep. And that's a big reason why our government goes to war for yep. certain things, because we want to make sure most things are measured in yep. dollars. And that's why most people that's get in the trouble. stock of the dollar. That's why most people get in trouble for like that insider trading and stuff oh, like that. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> People be profiting a so lot. So, it all right. So, as a Forex day trader, and that's something because, all right, like if you're a stock day trader, you're constantly pulling up like financial statements, you're, you're looking at the company and stuff like that, right? Yeah. But if you're a Forex, like if you're, if you're doing currency day trading, is it more so, is it such a science that you could probably do better fo- following the science of it versus like, I'm sure if you find out like, if people could foresee or they were researching like for example, Venezuelan government. Or, for example, like Russia declares war. <laughs> right. Yeah. Russia's getting ready to do this. I'm going to pull out. I'm not going to lie. When the, the whole thing with Russia was going on, I was finding every way to profit. Because I was like, yo, I can. I, like, it's just like in the beginning, you, were, you already see that they were like going through this commotion. And it's like, all right, but I already know something's about to happen. Yep. I was trying to trade. I'm not going to lie. I was trying to trade like. The, the Russian currency But it would not let me I'm not gonna lie I probably would've Became a millionaire So it's similar it to like Exactly what I thought So was like do. GME Like Robin Hood And stuff yeah, like at times, yeah. things They'll do that For those weird anomalies maybe. At times at, And there's certain times Yeah where those things Will happen Like when When the whole thing With the, the war and stuff Is going on The Russian um, currency Depending on what you're trading Because what you're doing Is you're taking The US dollar And you're kind of Trading it in For the, the Russian dollar And basically it, it, it was pro- it was like taking off. I was like, dang, and I was like, wow. I, I kind of but, seen it was gonna happen because of what was going on in the war, and those are, that's why they always say position yourself like in the beginning, um, before like things when it's actually happening, and follow the hype with trading sometimes because it can make you money too. Yeah, just by following. So, the hype. so so actually because of everything that happened with Russia, a lot of people started buying the stock and it increased it. Well, it, when the forex market, you're trading your your um, U.S. dollar for yeah. the Russian dollar. Yeah, exactly. So. In 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 aspect like when you're looking at the chart, it was kind of crazy. So that's basically what they're doing. They're trading it in for the well, the opposite. I'm sorry, the opposite. Because remember, it was crashing because of the war. Yeah. yeah. So you can basically um, trade it in and do the opposite. And tr- like, I don't even know how to put it in perspective. Because when you're using it on the the app, like trading it, you're not really like physically trading it in. You're just telling the app that this is what you want to do, and you're just betting on it. 
Oh, so yeah, it's like an option then. It's like, an, it's, like it's a option put or okay, it's option. Yeah. Oh, okay, option. Okay, option. Okay, okay. You're making money based on the value. The more it goes okay, down cool. or up, that's okay. Kind of like uh, Lockhead Martin. Yeah. You know back Lockheed. Be- Lockheed, right? Lockheed Martin. Lock- Lockhead. Before, yeah, before fucking the. Uh, that's a different girl. Right when the war was going on, bro, that shit went for like a hundred bucks within like two weeks. Yeah. 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 Right when the Russian war was going on, anybody would have known to invest into that because the defense, you know, defense. Shit, you company. should know because we have the fucking the, where they make the missiles is right yeah, around exactly. the corner from here. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So any like defense company was perfect to capitalize on when it came. Oh, to absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Especially Lockheed Martin. That's you like, know, but same like that. In this but you're right though. There's easy ways. Like if you don't even know how to trade or anything, you can. Probably Profit just by that, like uh, the whole thing with like uh, Elon Musk and like when they're tweeting and stuff yeah. like that. Those things are true. It can sometimes you can make money that way too. So just as easy, right? Like I use the Elon Musk thing as an example, but just as easy, a, a country could go into a war that nobody agrees with, and that drops the currency yeah. of the that drops the stock of the currency yeah. or whatever. And actually, the U.S. dollar was skyrocketing. Yeah, and the Russian dollar was going down. So it's like. Then you can profit off of those things if you know. I mean, in a way, it's not insider trading. It's just be using like your knowledge based on what's going on in the world and economics, yeah. and just taking which. It to and the reality, like there should be nothing wrong, and they shouldn't limit you for that because if you think about it, the same shit happens if a fucking company is dissolving. Yeah. Of course, you're gonna fucking do the yeah, same yeah. exact thing. You know what I mean? If a company puts if a company puts their statements out for for their quarterlies and they're fucking it's the same killing thing. it, it's the exact same it's process. Same yeah. Or if, for example, like. Fucking Elon is in the process of negotiating for Twitter, and he buys yeah. Twitter. Of course, you know what but I mean. Like it's it, 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 skyrocketing. It's crazy. Yeah, exactly. And th- then that's like one of the things I'm getting at is that like if something's going on in like the the world, then like why are they going to limit you from buying it? Because that's kind of fucked up. It's they like, don't want people to make money. They honestly don't. I mean, they did that with the uh, GameStop. Too obvious. Yeah. They it's did it with GameStop obvious. and AMC and a couple other stocks. Every time, um, well, that was different because 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 people were like planning no, 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 the short. This, this is a couple stocks. It's not just oh, okay. GameStop and AMC. I think it was uh BBY and uh yeah, they did a lot. A couple other ones. Yeah, yeah but they were shorting them. That's different. It doesn't matter. But it's 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 the it's, it's, it's should be able to happen. I mean, yeah, yeah, the yeah. short is there. It's always going to be shorted. It's they always going to be shorted. They do it. Like, <laughs> they do it. No, yeah, I know. I'm just saying. Their hands in there. I feel like I feel like short trading is a lot different. Than like just being able to read and and understand what's currently going on in today's yeah. society. Okay, yeah. That's a lot different than like coming together with a, t- a lot a lot of people and like planning a rouge against a fucking company to pull yeah, the fucking true. carpet from them. That's a lot different. That's, yeah, but institutional that's, that's investors, scheme, like that's institutional scheming. investors, though. Yeah. institutional <laughs> big people be shorting companies. Yeah, they oh yeah, they, yeah, they do. A shit out of companies. Yeah. So yeah. why can't retail investors do the same thing exactly. without repercussions? No, I, I, and I'm, I'm and I agree. I just think that I think in shorting in a general sense is just. That is wrong, and that that yeah, and you're right. But that that's when they go to the forex market. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that in the forex market and the the less restrictions they have on it is going to come more and more to light. The more that we have more retail investors, like I think we have more retail investors than we've ever had, right? Like, yeah. like oh, right absolutely. now, absolutely. So like when shit like that happens, it has a lot more noise than yeah. it used to have. Yeah, that's true. So, we, I mean, like our generation, we're gonna see some crazy shit. I think sure? as far oh, as these yeah, big yeah. institutions, and yeah. I think we're gonna start seeing a lot of crazy shit here soon. With when when everything starts fucking dropping down, if it yeah, continues we, how it is, and once everything starts really flopping, we kind of enter the bear market. Soon. Oh, we're, we're I'm gonna buying. Gonna see, I, I, I try to tell market. my girl, like, yo, every it's like it's like, why would I invest now? I see that you put this big chunk and you're down so much. I'm like, that's what you call a sale. <laughs> yeah. This is the stocks. The stocks on sale. Yeah, <laughs> like this is like you know how you go to Ross and they're like this section is clearance and stuff. This is my clearance section right now. <laughs> like leave me the fuck alone. I'm putting yeah, money in right now. Like it's weird. It's a weird Facts. thing. But like that's a good correlation. Some people don't for see it. it like that. But no, yeah. it's, yeah. it's but on sale. Honestly, it's actually the best time to buy right now. I mean, the market, oh. the stock, market, the stock market it's, it's, for sure is going to be on a reversal very same soon. Thing. Nah, it's going. It's going to keep dropping. No, I, no, no. I promise it's in the bear you. Market. We just entered the bear market. Yeah, yeah. Nah, exactly. I yeah. promise you. But the you're stock right though. Market you're, you're right. Very though. soon is going to go on a reversal. I mean, they've dropped to the lowest lows they Nobody possibly knows. can. Yeah. And no. I, I do feel, I, I mean, there's a guy. Give it a month. Let's give it a month. There's, there's a, a, there's a hey, lot of no guys. financial advice. But no financial advice. We're in a bear market. We'll no. in a bear market. And the fucking, these apps will tell you we're in a bear market right now. You know, but yeah. like, uh, there's a couple of people, though, that do say like, like uh, most average drops that we had, even COVID and stuff. And then anybody like somebody like me, like, ah, I kick myself because I started after COVID. Right. But yeah. then when you look at the analytics of like, fam, if I would have started during COVID, it doesn't matter what I picked. I'm up. You know yeah. what I mean? The, the, and the that's kind of like what we're in right now a little yeah. bit. Well, not even close because no. in, in COVID, companies were hitting five-year lows, lifetime lows yeah. since like they started their company going right. public. Now a lot of companies are in their one, 
two no, year, no, one no, two no. year lows, but they're not in the five year lows. No, not all I'm of them. telling you right now. There, there might be. There <laughs> might be I'm a few. I'm telling you right now. This is the lowest I've seen it since fucking before COVID. This is lower than COVID right now. Yeah, lower I'm not gonna than lie. COVID. I'm not gonna lie. There are some. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. Like I've been looking at the technicals <laughs> of these charts and like they're breaking like every type of support, every yes. type of everything that I've had, and I'm just like. All right, I'm gonna write it down. Yeah, that's fine with me. I'm gonna just take it down as much as you. No, want. I, I've been taking a lot of notes too because yeah. I, I, a lot of my main trainings do fidelity, and I and you can add notes on there. Yeah. And I've been going through them like okay on this day that I've been right. adding notes. I've been it's going through it to too, but though. a lot of them are dropping. But it, there there are some stocks that have dropped for like lower than COVID time, but a lot of, like a lot of the major ones have not passed. Yeah. The, but the, the, the COVID. Regardless, oh. the point is is like when you see shit like this, this like they said, like billionaires are made in recessions Facts. and shit like that. Yeah, it's definitely. because it's a sale on it's something sale. that the value it's a sale on something with value outside of the dollar and it's basically the last you, chance yeah it's and if you talk about inflation you talk about this and that it's black you friday. buy right now it's black friday guys <laughs> yeah like let's go like i i've been pulling i've been thinking about pulling shit out of my savings for times like right now and then it's always hard and that's the discipline of like, the market where it's like i'm not gonna that are was, we just entering so, it so or? that was one of the strategies that my mentor had put me on to he actually borrowed a hundred thousand from his Life insurance Put it into the AMC Whenever that thing Was going on He shorted it Made his 300k Pulled out Paid the 100 back And then Used the rest And profit Boom It's like mm-hmm. I, That's the way to do it I He mean, was ballsy He put yeah. the whole he was shit in He very yeah, He put the yeah. whole shit into I mean but then AMC? You, gotta, you gotta understand That some people Bro. Some people do Insider trading Cause they, they have More connections Bro. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, I met I met a guy That was that was uh, Refinancing his home Had no mortgage was refinancing for it, putting a mortgage on his house for seven hundred and something thousand dollars just to invest. Yeah, there's. I'm not gonna lie. There's certain stuff that happens in the market that I'd be like, damn. I'd be trying to find every Capitalize way to, on it real quick. because I know for a fact it's gonna do certain yeah. stuff. I'm just be like, yo, let me well, let me find out what I can do. Yeah, this guy yeah. was like, this guy's like, bro, I'm borrowing seven hundred thousand dollars at two percent. He's like, he's like, if I could, if I, point. He's like, if I borrow, if, like, if I throw that money in there right now. He, no, because his idea was, bro, if I throw seven hundred thousand dollars into market right now and I'm borrowing at two percent. And I wait ten years. I mean, yeah, I'm sure. guaranteed to wake way more money than I'm taking out. Yeah, but like yeah. what he was saying though, like, like what you're saying, like you you know you can capitalize off these moments, but like seven hundred thousand on that yeah. one moment. But you gotta realize, yeah. But I mean, Facts. diversify. Yes, like I have a couple stocks right now. I got a couple things in there because I believe in them. I'm like, yo, like I know this one's gonna go up. Like plug and I know I'm guaranteed they're gonna go up, but. I'm not putting a hundred thousand dollars. Well, well, okay, 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 but you say that, but these are people who make two hundred fifty thousand a year, three hundred thousand dollars a year. It's perspective. Yeah, you okay, know, this okay, guy okay. lives okay. in like a three million dollar house, so uh, yeah. pulling seven hundred thousand. You know, know what I mean? Yeah, some it's, people don't know. Some people will really risk fifty thousand dollars on stock. We so, not <laughs> making shit. So real quick, it's for, get back to the forex thing. Um, Sidetrack. So yeah, no. But, so it's not just the buying and selling. Like like people like me that have touched the stocks, I could I could conceptualize. All right, Russian stocks going down. I'm a sell. You know what I mean? Or yeah. I'm a you know buy now, and yeah. maybe it'll go up. Whatever, right? So, but you said, like you said, you can make money off the downs and ups of yeah. it, right? It's kind of like options. Is trading, it like right? option trading? Is so, it the yeah. same terminology? Do you use the same terminology for it? Mm, Is it like puts? I don't and calls? really talk about puts and stuff. We just sell, sell and buy. It's not really like the the put and the buy and stuff like that. Not really, but. The concept as far as how you profit when it's when it's selling and buying, yeah. It's the same type but of formula. In a way, because you know yeah. what options you got. I'm, I'm not going to lie. I'm not big on options because it's, it's like yeah. confusing. I love options. Bro, it's, it's, so confusing. Love options. We had, it's confusing to me. You got to buy the contracts. And then yeah. It's we confusing. had a 45-minute really episode that never dropped on it's options. Confusing. Yeah, because yeah. with, with Forex, <laughs> the thing is like with Forex, like, I mean, like let's say you yeah. buy a stock at a hundred dollars, you buy one stock, and then it goes to one fifty. You basically made fifty dollars. But in the forex market, you can use that hundred dollars and possibly off of that same move make a thousand. Right. Because so you just can take capital- that currency into another currency to another currency if you want to. Yeah. If you but, want to. Okay. Yeah, in a way, because what you're doing, you're just capitalizing off of the value. So, like, let's say I knew some insider trading, and I was like, "Yo, I know th- this is gonna happen. Mm-hmm. I can make." In a way, I can make more in the forex market than like buying the share. Yeah, yeah, because you're just capitalizing off of the value change, and you're just betting on it. Huh? That's really what it is. You're, yeah. That's really what it is. So it seems like the same concept as like puts and calls. And yeah, yeah. Like, very like same option yeah. trading. Very same concept. And then, but the, the the crazy thing is though, right? Like those that do option trading on like the regular market, right? Like on companies, you're looking at different things to determine whether you should do that. But 
I never heard like because I see all these companies that like those M. What is that? Where MLM, M- L- M- M- MLM. Oh, let's and stuff. get into that. Because but I did a lot of a different MLMs. Okay, because I see a lot of those more than ever for forex, yeah. and maybe it's because yeah. there is such a science to it. Yeah, that it's a lot easier to bet on that. It's going up or yeah, down exactly. than it is for like a company or a whatever. lot of people yes. went into more MLM because you can kind of more it's more easier to make money in a way because of how they structured it. Mm. And I mean, I, I've been in different MLMs for a long time with like trading. And I mean, I posted about it, different things like that. But after a while, it's just like I'm I, I'm not big, I'm not outgoing. So that was what yeah. kind of. Mess me up a little bit because I'm not here to just like convince somebody to do this. Yeah. Do that. That. And then so some I, people, I some people, sorry to cut you off. Some people join those groups also just for the resources that they have, exactly, and, or like the mentors that they have too. So yeah. sometimes it's not always to get into that company to to sell to other people. Yeah, it's also for the resources. Did yeah. you gain a lot from that? You think to do what you're doing right now? Yeah, I gained a lot. I mean, it was a great uh, as far as networking. Very great. I learned. I met like millionaires. Like mm-hmm. I was in rooms with people that I was never been in before. Um, my mindset has changed. I met a lot of different people. Like one of the people I met, this is actually his brand. This guy is like a millionaire, honestly. But um, as far as trading knowledge, it also helped me too and discipline. But um, I just didn't want to go that route anymore because I mean the thing is like what people don't understand is when you're trading and you're in these MLM companies, you're gonna make like I can make money without recruiting you so yeah that's just an extra side hustle people are like no you're just trying to make money i'm trying to help you out yeah because i can continue making money without you so it doesn't matter but it, yeah that's yeah. why people think it's a scam because certain people are just doing it in a different way and they're, they are scamming people in different ways with the crypto things you yeah. gotta see the instagram <laughs> yeah. is giving a bad name and that's yeah. why i was just like you know what i'll just trade on my own or do my own little group because it's, it's not worth it yeah it's a lot of work it's energy and time nah yeah, because that's interesting because it's, it's essentially the same thing as like giving your money to like a financial advisor or something yeah. that's going to yeah. invest your money or something like Not really. Like that. Nah, because what you're doing is they they basically have like resources and you pay. I was paying, I think it was like 235 a month, um, but they have like, I don't know if you guys ever use like TradingView. Yeah. Um, but TradingView has like the indicators. They yeah. have, they basically are providing you their own strategies, their own indicators. So that way you can trade. It's, I'm not gonna lie. It's good for certain people. That's why every situation is different for everybody. Yeah. Um, some people like that because it's like basically providing everything all in one to you. So that way you can just skip um, the learning process. Your learning curve is quicker that way. Yeah. So it works out for some people. It may not work out for some people, but that's why people are always bashing it. But it's just like, if it didn't work out for you, it has worked out for other people. Yeah. 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 Like it's, it's just every strategy is different for other people. Damn, that's I feel like there's like I mean at least on trading view there's at least a thousand different strategies you can yeah. utilize like the RSI's and the right. moving average so you can't really tell me your method works better than his method exactly. because as long as the method works I exactly. mean it's all it is at the end of the day certain because like they have like thousands of strategies within MLM companies and I mean I've used like two or three somebody else uses two or three but you could kind of pick and choose damn. Yeah, that's yeah. dope, bro. Man, that's crazy. Facts. That's a good episode. That's good, man. That's, one, that's, one, that's, one thing I would say, though, that yeah. a lot of people don't really know about is prop firms. See, you don't even know what prop right. firm what is. Right, what is a prop firm? So Explain that. Most, most prop firms are made by these millionaire traders that just has money to, like, kind of... Um, like throw back into other traders. Uh-huh. So what these company, what they do is they create companies that um, allow you to leverage their money to trade with. So for example, I mm-hmm. paid I paid two fifty, and they gave me fifty thousand dollars to trade with, and I make I make up to eighty five percent of whatever profit I made. So like in February, I made a little over five k based off of just doing that. Really, and the most I'm gonna lose is two hundred fifty dollars. So you don't lose the whole two fifty. I mean, if you lose, because the thing is, like, they're just not going to give you the account. You got if you're a consistent trader and you can show them that you're consistent, then yeah. they'll give you a real account and they'll, you can continue trading with them. But the thing is, like, if you lose, like, if you don't follow the rules and you lose the, you blow the account, the most you're losing is two fifty because that's what you put in. Yeah, but and there's different size accounts. It's wow. prop firms like built for people like you that are doing the day trading thing that yeah. can like get in there. You with can them day and- trade. You can, but it's, it, the the prop firms that I use are only for forex. You can kind of uh, use your own strategy, but that's the thing. A lot of people are like, "How much money do I start with?" This and that. But think about it. If you, you if you leverage their money. 
but, which is business one on one, right there. Business one on one. But they require you to show proof that you have trading history so, prior, prior to that. Yeah. So that's so what, what it does is you basically have to. All right, so this is the process. I paid two fifty. They give me a demo account, and I have thirty days to make eight percent. And I usually make that very quickly. But after that, that's phase one. Phase two, they give you a new demo account. You got to make 5%. And they're like, okay, bet. Once you do these two steps, we're like, okay, bet. You can trade. Now we're going to give you a live account. And this is your account. You make up to 85% of that account. Ah. You trade. But there's wow. downsides. You can't lose a certain amount. It teaches you risk to reward. And it yeah. teaches you how to like manage your money. But the downsides, it, it sounds like, worst case, you're just going to lose the money you put in. The money you put in. And then you lose the opportunity to invest with a prop. Firm. No, you just do it again. Really? You can just try it again. Uh, they're not going to deny you because you're, you're trying to come back with money. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that, that's one of my goals, too, like, in the long, long run is to have, like, a prop firm to give back to the people that I teach. Like, yeah. to help. Because, like, a lot of people make, like, $50, $20, but imagine just, like, that. Yeah, like, multiply. Because, like, you can skip the whole process. Because I started with $20, and I just kind of, like, worked my way up, eased my way. But think about if you just skip the whole process and you just... 50k because it goes up to a million yeah. you can you can have a million dollar trading account too yeah. you can have, that's my goal to have a million but like you can it's it's kind of crazy that's yeah. another thing that changed the game hey i never heard of that, that, yeah. that that's a big plug in right that now. changed prop my trading game dope. that changed my trade i had my biggest trading day using a prop firm really prop firms, yeah. y'all. that shit's crazy so it, not only in Forex can you leverage just off of like the one to one one to 20 one to 50 but you could also use like a prop firms to yeah actually have like a Fucking mm-hmm. back or yep. to invest in something like that. Yep. That's int- I never, yeah. I never heard of that before. That's yeah. dope. Yeah. That's something cool. My, I use my forex funds. They're what they pay so good. They pay you in crypto. They pay you whatever you want, and they pay good. Really? Yeah. You're basically like a contractor for them. Damn. That's so dope. that's better than like going to apply for a, a forex trading job. That, th- around that time when I was like applying for a forex, I was like. I found the prop firm. I was like, oh, this is a better route. I yeah. Just- so do you want to plug the prop firm that you use or no? Yeah, my forex funds. My forex my fund. forex actually, funds. I'm an affiliate. I'm big on affiliate marketing. I'm an affiliate with them. I can actually give you guys my um, link if you ever had anybody that wants to like do it. Let, let's it s- send it send it to us on our DM, yeah. and I'll put it in the description down below. So, yeah. if you, so if anybody's yeah. listening and they wanna they wanna try their luck with it, Backs. it's gonna be down in the description if below. If you're a consistent trader, this will change your life. I'm not gonna lie. I put so many people onto it, and it's changed their life. Like I'm not gonna lie. There's people that I've taught how to trade that are making more than me. Yo. <laughs> Like mm. it's it's kind of crazy because I like to see that. It's yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's dope, crazy. man. Yeah, next time we have you yeah. on, that's when you're gonna be at a million, baby. Yeah, bro. Yes, that's sir. what we're gonna do, boy. That's and you gonna have your own insurance. Yeah. <laughs> that's Definitely. what I'm talking about, man. Thanks Definitely. for coming on, bro. This was yeah, super bro. dope, bro. Yeah, that was, uh, that was a good episode. Pocket Watch Podcast. You know, we always end it with like a weekly success and failure. Oh shit, yeah. we'll go first that. so you can hear. It, you All know, right, kind of get an idea what we're gonna do. Um, I'll start first. Uh, weekly failure for me. Uh. I I feel like I've been needing to practice more patience um, in my workforce, in my work field or whatever. Um, It's crazy because it's like I hate the kids that go to school and think they know everything because it's like, fam, you need to get some experience before you come (laughs) tell these people what to do. But like my company, we're really small, you know, so like I'm starting to get more education than people that are in charge of me and stuff like that or people that I help with certain things. And it's been creating some impatience in me where I'm like, fam. I should be doing some of the things these people are doing and yeah. stuff like that. But uh, I got to practice patience. You know what I mean? Because at the end of the day, it's like, fam, you're only 25 years old. Like, like you Word. ain't going to be this or that. Like, you're not breaking the mold. Like, push <laughs> push as once, much as you want. Push as much as you want because anything can happen. Don't get me wrong. I yeah. am, and I'm a proponent for that. But I'm also trying to, like, I, I've, I've found myself getting impatient on things that's like, bro, you're doing good. You're yeah. doing things that you need to do. It doesn't mean you need to, like, fuck up what you got going just because right. you're learning all these new things yeah. or whatever. Yeah. Uh, that was a failure for me. Success, I would like to say um, uh, juggling just different things and, and still putting in the same effort. You know what I mean? Uh, that was one thing. Like, when I started this podcast, Christian came at me. Like, you're trying to go to school. You're trying to do this. You're trying to do that. Like, that's a lot, whatever. But I feel like uh, at this point, I'm doing a couple of things and I'm putting in. Nothing is lacking. Like the effort's there and it, and, yeah. it's, and it's good. And I'm proud of that. Good shit. Um. So my weekly, uh, my we- I'll start with my weekly failure. I guess this week, my weekly failure this week, um, is that with my whole pilot stuff, I just been kind of slacking with um doing everything I need to do with that. I could have. I actually. Well, I mean, I guess kind of. I got my um 
my letter set up for my, my PFT, pulmonary function test like that. But I kind of, I didn't set the appointment. I kind of been slacking with that. So it's definitely a failure on my end because I haven't really done what I should have been doing this week. But my success for the week is, man, it's kind of last week. I took it very, very light. Didn't really work that much at all. Um, spent spent some time with my girl. Me and my girl got to like kind of relax. Like I said, it's kind of like something I said last week just because my girl's been in school full time. We haven't really had a lot of time with each other. So last week I um I didn't really work much. I kind of relaxed, spent time with my girl, kind of rekindled everything again, so that, whatnot. Oh. And, um, but next week, I'm putting a goal to myself. Next week, I want to get back into the grind, execute 1,000%. She starts work um, in an episode we, the day we dropped this episode on Monday, first day at work for her. So, congratulations to her for that. Wrong one. <laughs> <laughs> so, congratulations to her, first day at work. But, um, but yeah, so that's that. Um, yeah, good shit. My weekly uh, success is I'm a plumber now. <laughs> <laughs> My man's trying to do his first flip. Jacob's so, 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 first so, flip. So, so what pipe yeah. did you have? So it was a PBs. <laughs> yeah, the PBs. I had to switch to the, the PEX. Uh, I got quoted at five thousand dollars English to, to fix it. It's English. plumbing PVC <laughs> piping. Uh, so it's, it's a polybutanol yeah. something piping. Uh, I'm flipping a mobile home right now. They back English in those times, again. They actually did <laughs> water supply lines. So it right. goes to your counters, your sinks. Right. What, what did you um, use for your connections for your PEX? Did you use Shark Bite or what? Oh uh, yeah, you shark bites, uh, shark bites? the yeah. crimps, and the crimps? I, I, yeah, yeah, the crimps. So, hey, those uh, are bad. A lot, there's a lot of controversy on that. But if you're listening, shark bites are the fucking they wave. Work. I mean, they they're work. wave. My boy's a plumber but, now. You know, I watch. <laughs> I mean, I don't know shit about plumbing. Me and my brother know nothing about plumbing. Well, we got quarter at five thousand dollars. We did a bunch of YouTube videos. We watched a lot of <laughs> he it. Said, Fuck that. YouTube, video. YouTube works. University. Yeah, yeah. that's how that's how I started fixing Thank iPhones. You. Yeah, YouTube yeah. University. Oh, YouTube Hell University. Yeah. That's how I fix my cars now. So we we wash the shit ton of it. Um. We got everything below five hundred dollars, and we were able to do everything ourselves. So uh, damn, from five five k to five hundred k to five hundred dollars, yes sir. So damn, uh, I, I'm proud of that. That's actually a success of mine because we took the time. We didn't just say, "Hey, we're gonna do it." We actually watched YouTube videos for days right. and days, and and we applied it. So, you know, hell yeah, that. congratulations, bro! So you know, so now I'm a plumber. If you need me, um, <laughs> weekly <laughs> failures. I'm a plumber. <laughs> <laughs> A <laughs> weekly failure is that uh, stress, man. It's it's hard not to get that stress to, to, to really fuck with your life a little bit when it yeah. comes to, you know, relationships and, and the goals and things you got to keep in mind. So, yep. you know, stress is definitely a big factor, especially with the flip. There's a lot of things I'm, I'm encountering. Like extra that's like, shit. Yeah, there's a lot of things I'm encountering yeah, that I'm like... you can't control, too. I can't control, yeah, like the yeah, AC, come out it has to be 5,000. It's coming up to like 7,000 in quotes. So I'm trying to find the right person. No. So it's a certain thing. I, I got somebody for you, bro. I hit him <laughs> up. He never responded back. Who Jordan Garcia? Yeah, <coughs> I, I got you. I'll, I'll, I'll call him after we're done. Another guy. I've been, I've been, I've been uh, getting some quotes, so I'm just, you know, certain stress, and I'm just trying to mitigate it so the point where I can actually, you know, like, you know, not yeah. not take it out on anybody else and just, yeah. you know, get things done. Or All right, cool, cool. Let's do it. All right. So what you got, Perry? I'm I'm a, I'm gonna relay mine to kind of business. Um, so my my failure, I'll start with the failure, is pretty much uh, content posting like on my business pages and stuff. Um, I know that's like it's always been my failure because I'm not as much as an outgoing person. So I mean, one of the things my mentor taught me that I, I've actually been using now, and I'm trying to find the perfect person is is actually like hiring somebody that loves doing that. Yeah, um, man. Using Fiverr, honestly. So yeah, like, bro. if you guys don't know, use Fiverr. Get all your <laughs> business stuff for the low. But um, that's one of the things I, I'm working on right now because. I definitely lack at that, and I feel like if I can get that up, it'll help my brand a lot more. Because um, you do story posts and stuff like that, but you're trying to do yeah. like that extra like posts. Yeah, like but I, I usually posts. post on like on my business page. I don't really post on my regular page that much. Yeah, okay. Yeah, What's I'm your always, business page? Put that on there too. So I I um I put I put that in there also. Yeah. But yeah, definitely. Send yeah. me that because that I got we'll, you. we'll put that on there. I got you. Yeah. And on your business page, you put like that's like mainly your trading posts and stuff like that. Most of the time, yeah, I try to uh, post like a lot of things that I'm doing or like different videos or different trades that I do. Uh, but yeah, I've been lacking on that. So I, what I'm doing now is using Fiverr to have somebody like kind of structure it and yeah. post for me, so that way I don't got to take time out of my day yeah. to do that. That's yeah. big, bro. And um, as far as the, I would say my positive was it we, the failure and the success. 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 So I would say the success right now for me is I'm in the process of actually um, hiring like a person to take all my calls for insurance. Yeah. Um, one of the things that I also been learning from my mentor is like automation. So yep. um, I'm trying to basically 
get employees, get uh, other people to like just do all the work that I don't want to do because they love doing it, mm-hmm. especially from Fiverr. Um, my assistant that I'm going to hire that will take my calls, but that will help me like automate everything. So I would say that's the first step in my automation process. So that way, like, let's say I go on vacation, my business will still be running. So yep. that's one of the steps I've taken. I'm in the process of like hiring somebody that will take my calls. So Hell yeah, yeah. bro. Yeah, man, because that's that's... That's big. If you want to scale, like you said, if you want the business to keep running when you're going yeah. on vacation or something, and that's just a that's a good tactic to life, bro. Like, yeah. just I, I, I got to get better on my automation stuff. I'm keep it a bug. Me talking to you, I'm like shit, man. Yeah. <laughs> that but just that's sounds good. Who's Fiverr? What you yeah. say? Fiverr. But that's what right. I'm saying. A lot of the work that, like for example, I hate calling people. Mm-hmm. Like just schedule the work for me. So I'm like, okay, bet. Let me go on Fiverr, find somebody with 10 years experience that loves doing it. Mm-hmm. They love doing it, and, and that's key. Yeah. Like, yeah. Let me find. That. There's somebody that's making money doing <sighs> the things you don't want to do. That you don't want to do. Hey, posting I wish I could posting do that, on Instagram. Posting on Instagram. When I first started my business page, they grew me like. 300 organic followers and then when like the job was done those people didn't unfollow me i was like okay yeah that's interesting because it's you like you don't really get organic um traffic paid when for you pay for it like, yeah it's, yeah. It's you get a bunch of indian accounts that yeah, a bunch of indian <laughs> account, but, but no nah, they <laughs> were actually <laughs> talking to them liking their page Damn you, Diego. Like, wow. yeah word yeah, yeah that's dope though that's hell cool. yeah bro man we better try because i mean like as a podcast like I put out like mainly on LinkedIn. It's funny, but like we get all these Indian people LinkedIn. that message us. <laughs> but we got on LinkedIn. But Fiverr was one that popped up a couple of times, and that might be one we have to try out. Yeah, I'm, as far I'm, as getting organic, I'm, I'm gonna start using them again because I stop. I stopped using. Them. I'm gonna start. Yeah, again. LinkedIn be having all them Indian people. They be writing me all the time. Oh my god, <laughs> trying to sell me leads. They be like, "Do you? How, what are you doing for your leads? Uh, we got some a team over here that'll help you out, get you your life insurance leads." I'm like, bro. No, you guys be trying to scam. So Word. Tell, like, dang. Yeah. Word. <laughs> but that's it, man. Pocket Watch Podcast. Thanks for coming on, Thank bro. Thank you for having Thank me, you, bro. Dope episode, man. Uh, check them out. All this stuff's in the bottom. Again, like, comment, subscribe. Subscribe. Do definitely. everything you need to. This is a, this is one of many dope episodes that we're putting out. Those of you that listen weekly, you already know. But if you're new, uh, this is just a taste. We, oh. We're getting deeper and deeper, better and better. Yes, sir. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hey, We're going to get some more going on, too. That's, uh, I'll hopefully, get one of those. I'll hopefully one next of those. week or something like that, uh, we'll be announcing some merch that we're getting. Oh, ready yeah, to definitely, definitely. Pretty much give away and sell XYZ. Yeah, so definitely follow us on Instagram so you guys can stay tuned for that because we're going to be doing some giveaways and everything like that. So if you guys want to get uh, get involved with that, you guys definitely got to follow us on Instagram at Pocket Watch Podcast. Because um, we're not gonna, all of our episodes are kind of delayed a little bit. So by the time you guys actually hear it, you guys won't. Mm-hmm. We guys will probably already be too late for you guys. So yeah. definitely tap in with us on there. Yeah. You guys want to add anything else? Yeah, yeah. Man. I can include out. some trading resources if they, you want to give away to. Put it yeah, on. yes, yeah, send cool. it to us, man. I'll, I'll, I'll cool. put everything in the description down below. Right there, cool. trading resources below, <laughs> which is very vital. <laughs> Yo, we give you Perry's coming Yo, through and giving you everything. I spent a lot of money right here, bro. Content right here. Yeah, a lot of money on trading knowledge. Hell yeah, yeah man. Yo, listen to the man. He made the mistakes that you don't want to make Facts. if you're just getting into it. <laughs> yes, sir. But all right, guys. Pocket, watch out. Pocket, watch out.